today's problems, we take today's issues, and we cast them upon the Lord. Lord, you care for us, so we just take the problems and issues, and we free ourselves from the uh, things of the flesh of today, and we just come into your presence, come into your word. We know that you watch over your word to perform it, and so we pray, Lord, that, that you would have free course tonight, that you would use us to the praise of your glory. The Holy Spirit will have free course as we minister the word of God to those that are watching, those that are listening, those that will be studying with us. We welcome you on our Facebook Live. We welcome those uh, pastors in Kenya and Pakistan. I'm getting, uh, you text me after the service. Uh, uh, where is that? Who else? There are several, several pastors in Kenya, several people in Kenya and in Nigeria and South Africa and just around the world. So we welcome you. Those in India also <coughs> are watching. And so we welcome you tonight uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, we're going to be doing, uh, speaking uh, on deliverance basics tonight uh, for your pastors around the world that you uh, get an understanding uh, as God is moving in the earth and deliverance is hitting the earth, going to hit the earth, you need to know how to handle deliverance, how to handle spirits, what to look for, and uh, how to get people set free. So I'm going to be ministering on just the deliverance basics. I did it bef uh, a couple weeks ago, but we're going to go take another look at it. If you go to your Bibles in Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, you can turn and open your Bibles. We're going to look at the uh, beginning uh, where deliverance really came in and uh, see what happens tonight. Amen? Uh, go to uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 14 through 18. It says, uh, And you shall not go aside from any of my words, which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Uh, so God said, you can't just pick and choose his word and pick and choose what side. Don't go to the left, don't go to the right. His word is centered, and you stay on the center of his word. But it shall come to pass that if you will not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and to observe to do his commandments, his statutes, which I command thee this day, this is Moses speaking, that all these curses shall come upon you, thou shalt be cursed in the field. You'll be cursed in the basket and your store, which means your food will be cursed. And he said, you should be cursed in the fruit of your body. You won't have any children or the fruit of your land. It won't produce anything or the increase of your, your, your sheep and your cows or your flocks and your sheep. Verse 19, cursed you shall be when you come in. Cursed you shall be when you go out. So uh, the Lord shall send upon you cursing, vexation, rebuke in all that you set your hand to until you are destroyed until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord shall make pestilence cleave to thee until it has consumed you in the land and whether thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with consumption that's tuberculosis, heart disease, lung disease, lung infections, and with fever, and with inflammation, inflammation of the joints, inflammation of the skin, inflammation, just all kind of inflammations, and with extreme burning, and with the sword, with blasting, that's blasting, is like, uh, uh, and with mildew, everything's going to be corrupted, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. You say, well, why would God do something like that and curse people? You said, God said, because I've made a covenant with you. I'm making a covenant with you, and I'm going to watch over you. I'm going to be El Shaddai. I'm going to be your protector. I'm going to be your source of supply. I'm going to watch over your land and give it rain in its season. I'm going to cause fruit to come forth. I'm going to give you everything that you need. All I need you to do is follow my statutes and my laws and this. But if you want to rebel against it, and if you come in a covenant with me, then these things shall hit you. And so this is where really deliverance starts is when we begin to rebel against God's law, we begin to re rebel against God's statutes and God's commandments, it opens up the door of what we call legal grounds that demons have to vex us, harass us, and uh, cause sickness and disease uh, to come upon you. I'm not going to read all Deuteronomy 28. There's just every verse uh, has something about a curse. Your fruit, uh, the locust is going to consume it. Your trees will be consumed. A stranger uh, will be above you, and you will be the low post. And if you feel like this is happening in your life, that something is not right, that you can't even uh, uh, get a promotion, and you're, you're always broke, and there's always a sickness, and there's always something going on, we need to look and see if there's a curse or something going on in your bloodline and in your life, 
and that you can be free from them. So I'm not going to go through doing all of Deuteronomy 28. There's a lot of them. But curses, God said in De Exodus 20, uh, verse 3 to 5, you can look at that and say, well, why would God do this? He said, you, ha you shall have no other gods besides me. You shall not make yourself any great image. You know, Israel did that a lot of times. They had the golden calf. They had the golden cow. They made idols, Baal, uh, Ashtoreth, Chemosh. They made all these different idols. Any likeness of anything that is the heavens above, that is the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. So he said, now that what's in the heaven above, that means astrology. You know, people st there's certain uh, nations, they study the stars, the constellations, and, and, the, and they call this Jupiter, and this is Mercury up here, and, and they made images of all these things, and they worship these things in the heavens above, or there's an earth beneath. What's in the earth beneath? Uh, some unclean things down there on the earth beneath, or that is in the water. Uh, Dagon was a uh, fish god. He was a half man, half fish, half go uh, man. They worshipped him. So he said, don't go worshipping things. I'm right here. Uh, you shall not bow yourself down. Verse 5, you shall not bow yourself down nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third or fourth generation of those who hate me. So God said, you hate me if you don't uh, uh, follow my, my laws, my commandments. I give you simple commandments, simple laws. You shall not do these things, abominations. He said, I'm a jealous God. That jealous God in that scripture means having a fiery concern for the covenant. A jealous, fiery, and you know, some people are envious and jealous of you, but this guy said, I got a, I got a fiery, my temper gets hot because I love you so much to be in commitment to you that uh, uh, you break this covenant, I'm, you're talking about a jealous God. You ever had somebody be jealous of you? It ain't, no, it ain't fun. So God said, I'm a jealous God. So, why would God do this? He did a plan. He gave him the Ten Commandments. He called Moses up on the mountain, gave him the Ten Commandments. He said, I'm giving you the Ten Commandments to the children of Israel. Not that they can keep them. God knew they weren't going to keep the Ten Commandments. He gave them the Ten Commandments to show them that they couldn't keep the Ten Commandments without him, without the Holy Spirit, and without redemption. And so in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, you can uh, take your notes in your Bible and, and know this. Uh, uh, in deliverance that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. It says, verse 13, Galatians 3.13, redeemed us, bought us back, made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hang up on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham, what is the blessing? Substance. Abraham has substance. He had the covenant transfer. I talked about that Sunday on our Sunday teaching about the, the uh, God made a covenant with Abraham. He said, I'll make your children as a sea, sand of the sea. As a, as a, if you can count the stars, that's how many uh, cars. You'll be a father of many nations. I'll be your reward. I'll be your protector. Uh, uh, I'll bless you. Abraham had 300 servants. He had cattle. He had sheep. He had gold. He had silver. These are the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus that might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, Curses are broken by faith. The same faith you use to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior is the same, <coughs> excuse me, the same faith that you use to appropriate and break the curse. You have to believe that the curse is broken and you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior so automatically the curse is broken and you confess it with your mouth and you begin to call out these curses. I break this curse in the name of Jesus. I'm a child of God. I'm in the kingdom of God. So I have a right to, to, uh, to be free of the curse because Jesus became a curse for me. He redeemed me. So these curses cannot operate against me. Devil, back up off me. I have legal grounds. Galatians 3.13. Here's my legal grounds. I'm in the court of heaven. And, I, and the Lord says, I am not guilty of the curse. Your legal grounds is, is null and void. You can't use that against me. So, they were under a curse <clears throat> for hundreds of years until Jesus came. 
Luke 4, verse 32. Jesus came teaching in their synagogue. Luke 4, 32 says, And they were amazed at his teaching, <coughs> for his word was with authority and the ability and weight and power. Now in the synagogue there was a man that was possessed by a foul spirit of a demon, and he cried out with a loud, deep, terrible cry, Ah, let us alone. What are we to do with you? What do we have in common with you? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One. And so just in that scripture, you can see, tell alone demons recognize who Jesus was because he had the weight, the ability, and power. Now in deliverance, every believer, Jesus gave them the commission, you shall cast out devils and lay hands on the sick. But in a deliverance ministry, there is a special deliverance anointing on the deliverance minister and that ministry that has a weight and a power to cast out demons. I have people that text me and ask me, can they have a counseling session or can, they get, can I get on the, uh, Zoom and counsel them and, 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 and cast them out? And I say, no, you need, if you need deliverance, you need to come to the place where God has ordained his name, where he's ordained the deliverance anointing to be, that you can get set free in that atmosphere. Uh, some, a lot of people just want a, a band-aid. They just want you to tell them what's wrong, and then they go about doing what they say. But there's teaching, and basic teaching that you need to do, even your pastors, listen to me, as you're ministering to people, even in your congregations, that they need to know that when they, you cast out a devil out of them, that the devil's going to go into dry places. He's going to come back. And if they don't have the word of them, that demon is going to bring seven other spirits. So there's a lot of different uh, gears that have to mesh in your deliverance. We need to make sure uh, uh, that you don't have any unforgiveness in your heart. We have to make sure that the curses are broken. We have to make sure that you are, uh, are saved. Deliverance is the children's bread. And so for you to get on a, a Zoom or on Facebook or call me on the phone and say, can you pray for me for deliverance? Uh, you can get a measure, but you, you won't get the full measure that you need to get see, set free. There needs to be teaching and instruction. The Bible called Jeremiah and said, see this day I've called you to root up, to pluck up, to destroy but also to build and to plant. So you just don't get delivered without having a word foundation in you. And so you need to have teaching. Uh, deliverance is not a, a catch-all, just abracadabra and you're free. You have to understand that deliverance, there's an anointing to set you free, but there's also a requirement of you to study to show yourself approved and to close every door that the devil has for you. So they said, what do we have to do in common? And so we're hearing that even in America right now. What Christians, what do we have in common with you? We don't want your God. We want to smoke our dope. We want to do marijuana. We want to party. We want to have same sex. What are we to do with you? Have you come to torment? Why are y'all tormenting us? We just want to party. So that's the demon that's operating in people. Luke 4.35 says, but Jesus rebuked them. See, you can't be afraid of these people. We have to rebuke folks, saying, be silent, you devil. Gag them and come out of him. And the demon had thrown the man down in their midst. He came out of him without injuring him in any possible way. So demons will challenge you, but as a believer, once you get free and God, call, and, and God wants you to be a, a deliverance minister or someone cast a living, you got not ha can't have fear of devils. You have to know who you are in Christ Jesus. You have to know the authority that you have in Christ Jesus. That once you become, believe, become a believer, automatically you have power and authority over all the power of the devil. Every serpent, every scorpion, and any such thing shall not hurt you. You need to know that inside yourself. That you have the Holy Spirit with you and the power of God is resident in you. And, and that only comes by faith by speaking the word and by learning the word. Verse 36, and they were amazed and said one to another, what kind of talk is this? See, deliverance talk and, and apostolic talk is a whole different type of language. People don't understand. What are you talking about? I, I got a devil. What do you mean I got a devil? Ain't no devil in me. Yeah, we speak with authority and power. He commands the foul spirits to come out. With authority and power, not with shouting and screaming at a devil. There is an authority or exusa on the inside of the believer with authority. Demons recognize authority. 
They recognize holiness. We know you're the holy one. We know you, are, you got an anointing on you. Why you come messing with us? We know we're going to hell one day. We know we're going to be thrown in a lake of fire, but it's not our time yet. Why are you messing with us? Why are you stirring us up? Well, see, Jesus came to stir up the devil. And that's what deliverance basic began. He started stirring up demons when he came on the scene. When he said in Luke 4, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, has anointed me to preach deliverance to the captives. So that was the beginning of deliverance for the body of Christ, for the, the church, the new church that was going to be birthed. Jesus came and released that deliverance anointing. And we know uh, that it, it took some time because uh, the, this, the man brought his son to Jesus and said, this de my son has a demon. And he throws him in the fire. He makes him foam at the mouth. He throws him in the water. And your disciples couldn't cast him out. Well, why couldn't they cast him out? He said, Jesus said, these kind come by prayer and fasting. And we know that prayer and fasting helps build the anointing, the deliverance anointing that Jesus deposits in us. So they were amazed at his power because he was anointed. The Holy Spirit was on him. And so when you receive the Holy Spirit, in, Luke, uh, in uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. What is that power? The power to deal with devils. When you start speaking in tongues, that power is resonant in you to cast out devils. And so rumors spread into every place surrounding the country. And so rumors spread, especially if, Pastor, if you're going to do deliverance, rumors are going to spread. They're going to start calling you that church. Oh, you go to that church. Oh, we don't, we don't go to that church. We don't like that church. They too radical in that church. And they, the devil don't want to come to this church. But people need to be free. And so we're not afraid of the devil. That's the first thing. Luke 4.38, he says, Then he arose and left in the synagogue. He was in the church, and the demon manifested. And then he went to Simon Peter's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering in the grip of a burning fever. And they pleaded with him for her. Now remember back in, in, in Deuteronomy 28, God said, I'll give you a spirit of burning. Fever, consumption. So she had a burning fever. And they pleaded with him for her. And standing over, he rebuked the fever. And it left her. Didn't say he laid hands on her. He said he rebuked the fever. Uh, in deliverance, uh, it delivers basics for you pastors. The fever is the easiest thing to cast out. You lay hands on them and fever will leave. Why? Because the fire and the heat in you is hotter than, the fi than fever can ever be. Amen. The fire of God in you is so hot that that demon has to flee. He, he, his fire don't mean nothing. He got little fire. You got big fire. And it just consumes him. And so when you lay hands on him, that fever will leave very quickly. Especially with children. Children have that, that childlike faith. But when you pray for them, that fever leaves. Now, the Bible says that the setting of the sun... In fact, he was standing over, he rebuked the fever, it left her, and immediately, immediately she got up and began waiting on them. Immediately that demon grip, lost his grip and he had to leave her. Now it says, verse 40, now in the setting of the sun, indicating the end of the Sabbath, all those who had many, who, who had any, all those who had any or who were sick with many kind of diseases, brought them to him, he laid his hands upon every one of them and cured them. And so that's why I go back and say, if you need deliverance, you need to come to a church where you can get hands laid on you. Sometimes uh, in deliverance ministry, because deliverance is the power of God. It's a demonstration of the power, gifts of God. Deliverance is the, uh, the gift of faith operates in deliverance ministry because it takes faith to believe when you speak to that devil that is going to leave. And that, that's a faith gift. And he said, I command you in the name of Jesus, go. And also there's an impartation that takes place on the laying of hands of that deliverance anointing. And also the laying on hands help the deliverance ministers. A lot of times the word of discernment comes, the word of wisdom comes, and a word of knowledge comes. Because a lot of people will come for deliverance and they just have the symptoms, but they don't know what the root cause is. And so it takes the Holy Spirit <clears throat> to give you information on what this person really needs or really needs. All they know is, I, I, got, I got hurt. I've been hurt. Well, then that, 
then the Holy Spirit said, well, no, that person, they've been raped when they was a child, and you need to go deal with the root of rape. And then you hit that root, and all of a sudden the demons start screaming out because they know they've been found out. And the person gets free immediately. Then you got to pull out the buckets. The buckets and deliverance are for just uh, the phlegm that's in people's body. Demons make nests in their body. Demons don't go in the bucket. It's just the phlegm. You need to uh, have common sense. You don't want them throwing up on the floor, so you get a bucket. And you get purged. Jesus said, cast out the devil. Ek bello, expel it out. And so demons are in and they have to be cast out. We bring them in from in ingesting alcohol. We bring them in from smoking dope and, and cocaine and opioids and uh, inhaling these things. These demons are air. De Jesus said, he breathed on the disciples and said, receive the spirit. That word spirit is pneuma, he, the breath or air, and so demons are in the spirit realm, in the air, and so you can have thousands of men there because they're, they're in the spirit realm. They're not in the natural realm, and so they're, they're real tiny. They can be real tiny. They can be huge, but uh, the, the legion had 6,000 of them, so, and a lot of times. So Luke 4, 41 says, the demons came out of many people screaming, and crying out. That's why people don't like coming to deliverance. Because people start screaming and crying out. Sometimes you need to scream. Sometimes you just need to have a good scream. Because you, so much pressure is on, your, on, on you. That just, get, just let it loose. Cry out. Command those things to come out of him. He said you are the son of God. But he rebuked him. And would not permit them to speak. See demons, demons can control people's voice box. Demons, people don't even realize they have demons in them for so long that, that they have control over them. Uh, you say, well, people sleepwalk at night. No, that's a demon making them get up and walk and, and, and there's be sleep. The demon's in control of that body because they knew that he was the Christ, the Messiah. Demons know who you are when you have the anointing. Now, when David came, he left Peter's house, went into an isolated desert place, and the people looked for him until they came up to him and, tr and, and tried to prevent him from leaving them. When you start setting people free and they freely get free, they will appreciate you setting them free. They will look for you. You don't have to advertise your big worldwide ministry. Uh, I guarantee you people will be looking for you to get free. Uh, the, the, uh, um, one of his disciples, when they cast a demon out of her, Mary, was it Mary Magdalene? They cast a demon out of her. The Bible says she was so appreciative, she started following him. She wouldn't leave him. She, she, he said, too much is given, much is required. And she, she appreciated being set free. When he cast out the spirit out of the demoniac in the Gadarenes, the man wanted to follow Jesus, but Jesus said, no, stay here and be a testimony uh, to the power of God. Uh, and be a testimony, be a testimony. Make to let the devil know that something happened in this town and they can never change it. Because they tried to change when Jesus was crucified. The soldiers came and tried to say, well, they stole the body. You know, they wanted to lie. The devil always tried to lie and tell a lie to keep the truth being, being told. The truth is, church has power. Amen. Truth is, some churches ain't got no power. Right. So you need to find a church with power. Amen. If you're sitting in there drying up, shriveling up, come out of them dead, dry places, Come to a place where you can get set free. And I found over the years that I, even in basic deliverance that people can be in the church. They're not spirit filled. They don't speak in tongues. They don't cast out devils. They'll come here. They'll get set free. And then they go back to that same dry church and get bound up again in that church because they say, well, we don't believe in that. And you can't do that there. And they wind up being back in the same mess two years down the line. Then you see them three or four years later. Here they come in the door in a worse state than what they were when they should have stayed where they, where, where they were in a place of safety. But he said to them, verse 43, I must preach the good news of deliverance of the gospel to the, king, of the kingdom of God, all other cities, towns also, for I was sent for this purpose. He continued to preach in the synagogues in Galilee. So, so he said, well, why are you teaching deliverance basic? Why do you keep teaching it over 30 years? It's because the body of Christ is under balance and someone has to continue to teach deliverance and continue to cry that God's uh, people need to be set free and you're going to see deliverance explode. Every time there's a move or a wave of God, the devil comes in and tries to stop uh, the deliverance anointing. Even, even in the uh, 50s and 60s, they had the healing anointing. Actually, it was supposed to have been the, the deliverance anointing. Deliverance has been around for a long time. 
In the 40s, they were casting out devils. Then all of a sudden, the enemy shifted it to everybody wanted to be an evangelist. Everybody wanted to be a healing evangelist. Then everybody wanted to be a teacher. Everybody wanted to be the famous preacher. Now everybody wanted to be a prophet. Now everybody wanted to be an apostle. And so there's an underbalance and overbalance of other things. So let's, let's look at some basics. Uh, uh, the Bible says he cast out unclean spirits. In Matthew 12, 43, it says when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, it roams through dry, arid places in search of rest, but it does not find it. What are dry, arid places? Those are places in the spirit realm. It is dry and arid like a desert in the spirit realm. The word unclean means to be ceremonially impure or morally impure, demonic. And so people can have unclean spirits in them. When it's cast out, it goes into a dry place. Then this spirit says, I will go back to the house from which I came out of. So demons consider our physical bodies their houses. Well, why would they want to occupy our physical body? Because they don't have one. God took our spirit man and blessed us, took us out of him, the spark our spirit man, and put us in a physical body. Demons are envious, are jealous, because they don't have a physical body. They, don't, they can't feel it, so they try to enter into our physical body. When he, in the garden, when he cursed Adam and Eve, he told the serpent, of the dust you shall eat. What was Adam made out of? Dust, dirt. So demons are always trying to get into our physical bodies and we open up the door for them and they can come in and they enter in. He said, I'm going to go back to my house. They got delivered. Maybe it was an alcohol spirit and, and the spirit was cast out. And he said, I'm going back and I'm going to try to tempt them to go back and get some more alcohol. You got free from alcohol. God set you free. Jesus says, go and sin no more. So you go out and you go drink again. Well, that... The liquor store over the door says wine and spirits. So the spirits are hanging out at the liquor store. They say, uh oh, we got one. Let's follow him home. So the spirit of perversion follows you. The spirit of lust follows you. And the spirit of alcohol says, all y'all come on in there. Lying comes in. Spirit of pride, you come too. And we're going to have a party. And this is my house. And we're going to occupy that house because they just opened the door back up for me to come back in. So I'm going to be the doorkeeper. And I'm going to allow all the other devils to come in. Because when they pass out from being drunk, y'all just sneak on in. Just that simple. That's how they operate. You pass out. You get drunk. You don't remember what you did the last day. Well, the devil snuck in while you was drunk. You weren't in control of your facilities. Say, so I'll come back to my house, which I came out. When it arrives, it finds the place unoccupied. Unoccupied. They didn't put no angels in there. Didn't put no word in there. It's swept and garnished. It's put in order. It's decorated. The, the Holy Spirit came in and washed the walls down and cleaned all your pipes out and got all the demons out. And then you bring them back in the house and mess it all back up. Then he goes and brings seven other spirits, more wicked, more wicked. He said, I was wicked, but a greater power came in and cast me out, so I need someone strong, stronger than me to help me stay in. So I'm going to get a stronger, strong man to come into this body, and we're going to really bind them up. And they go in, and they make their home there. And the last condition of that man becomes worse than the first, so also he shall be to this wicked generation. So God says, if I give you deliverance and you go out there and do it, it's going to even be worse for y'all uh, 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 in this wicked generation. So you got to check your house. Now, this is a picture I got up over above here. There's a ghost in the, in the door in that house. Sometimes demons will be in a, literally be in your house, in a house. You buy a new house, you need to go in there with oil, you need to go in there and pray, and you need to... Bind them devils and command every demon to leave that house or portergeist or whatever that's hanging in around in that house. You don't know what, uh, some people, some houses, uh, maybe the person died. Maybe the person was murdered in that house. Maybe something went on there. Maybe it was a drug house. Spirits will hang in those houses uh, until somebody comes and casts them out. So you've got to check your house in the natural and in the spirit. 
So, uh, so Jesus fulfilled the prophecy that there, be a, there shall be deliverance upon Mount Zion. Zechariah 13, verse 1 and 2 says, In that day shall be a fountain open to the house of David. What is that? It says, In that day shall be a fountain open to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem for the sin and for uncleanness. What is that fountain? The fountain were the 40 stripes on Jesus' back. The beating he took. It cut him open. He became a fountain of living life. The blood, of, the blood it was alive and it dealt with uncleanness. In fact, the Bible says his blood, when it touched the earth off the crown, 500 people came up out of their graves and walked the streets of Jerusalem. That's how powerful his blood was. How powerful the angels came from heaven and took every drop of his blood and took it back to heaven. And he sprinkled it upon the holies of holies in heaven, forever redeeming mankind back to God. So the blood speaks. When, he, when Jesus went up to heaven, he said, don't touch me, Mary. I, I, haven't, been, I haven't sent it to my father yet. When he went up to heaven, Jesus took his blood and he sprinkled it like the priest did on the all the holy place of the altar in the holies of holies and on the uh, uh, altar uh, uh, altar of sacrifice the same altar that Moses built on earth there's one in heaven and he put his blood on on that and the bible says the blood in the spirit realm was speaking they have been redeemed back to god they have been delivered they are healed they are set free the blood speaks the bible says the king's blood cried out from the god deliver me so cain's blood he said how much more will the blood of jesus speak even greater than when cain's blood spoke out so the blood in heaven is speaking on our behalf so when you say the blood of jesus covers me the blood in heaven says they sure, i sure do and he said, put a drop of my blood on them and wash them white as snow. Verse 2, and it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And I also will cause the prophets and the unclean spirits to pass out of the land. That is a promise of God, and we're standing on the promise, and we're on the edge and the cusp of the greatest move of God in America. You're going to see unclean spirits coming out of people. You're going to see deliverance coming out. The land's going to be purged of this abortion, purged of all this craziness going on, purged of this homosexuality, purged of it. Deliverance is coming into America. Deliverance is coming around the world, even in India and Africa. Even in India now, they're throwing away their idols because coronavirus couldn't save them. Their idols couldn't save them. Everywhere you're seeing the, the unclean spirits are being passed out of the land. Part of deliverance, is, he said, they brought many that were vexed of the devil. Uh, uh, <clears throat> the word vexation is the word dahi dahimonizomi. Dahidoizomi. It means to be exercised by a demon, to be vexed by a demon, to be zest by a devil. The devil vex you all day. You at work and somebody running their mouth, blah blah blah. And, they get, and the devil said, they're getting on my nerve. They're getting on your nerve. Ain't they getting on your nerve? He says, look, you ought to tell them something. You ought to, you ought to cuss them out. You ought to. That's how the devil does. He vexes you all day. Instead, he said, no, I'm walking in the peace of God. I'm walking in the love of God. That ain't nothing but a demon speaking. I ain't paying it no attention. See, the devil will vex you. The woman came and said, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. The devil will just talk to you. Yaka, 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 yaka. The latest vexation is now he's talking about uh, you better watch out for this Delta uh, variant of the coronavirus now. He's still trying to put fear in people's heart. Yeah. You got, uh, 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 what's his name? Coach, whatever his name is, he's out there on it. They, they need to get him off the TV. Yeah, well, this variant, this, 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 this Delta variant, I'm afraid this thing's going to be even worse than, than it. shut up. Just shut up. You got to do like Jesus. Satan, Lord, rebuke you. Yes. Peter, shut up. You don't know what spirit you are. <laughs> Amen? It means, it comes from the, the, the word patho or pentho. It means to experience a sensation or an impression, usually painful. Isn't that interesting? I just don't feel good. I just, I don't, it's just, just a horrible day. I just feel. <laughs> 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 
I just feel, it's just, I get this impression that just things haven't gone good today. Shut up, devil. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It, vexation means to feel. I, I feel this. Or, it, or a passion. To suffer. Oh, I'm just suffering on this job. Y'all don't know how I'm suffering on this job. Oh, woe is me. Jesus. That's what the man said. My son is grievously vexed with a demon. I mean, it's just like, ain't no joy. You do have no kind of joy. Everything out of your mouth is negative. What, you, what's the matter with you? you? My son is vexed. He, he says, oh, I don't care. I don't know. I'm just sad. I want to kill myself. That's being vexed with a devil. Also, vexation is a physical affliction. Psalm 6, verse 2 to 4 says, Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I'm weak. O Lord, heal me. My bones are vexed. My soul, my mind, will, and emotions are vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. Save me from my mercy, for your mercy's sake. I got bone cancer. I, my, my bones are vexed. They get on my last nerve. I thought I had two last nerve, but you didn't got on the last one. Now remember now, David, he, he spent a whole lifetime of warfare. I mean, he's running from physical attacks of Saul and uh, the sons of Belial and all these wicked men around him. And, and, and he was always crying, oh, Lord, deliver me. Lord, save me. Lord, I'm in trouble. Lord, teach my hands to fight. Lord, oh, deliver my soul. He's just going through, just, just going through. Well, I'm here to tell you God did through Jesus Christ. He has delivered you from all these afflictions and all this stuff. What happened here? They messed up this thing. And All right, devil, get off my screen here. Where was I at here? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Vex. Bad language vexes. It's vexation. Second Peter 2, verse 7 to 9. Get the scripture. And delivered just lot, vex with filthy conversation of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them, Seeing and hearing vex his righteous soul from day to day with the unlawful deeds. Every word is a curse word coming out of their mouth. They're on your job. They're in the cafeteria when you go to work. Everything's a curse word. Uh, you you got to work there. You got to get your paycheck. So you go among these people. And uh, I guarantee you, if you want to get rid of people that curse on your job, well, you ain't supposed to, but... Start speaking the word and pull out your Bible once in a while while you're sitting in the cafeteria. Don't pull it out on your desk, but just say, I'm, or put it out on your phone and say, I'm reading my Bible, or I'm praying. You'll have the whole table to yourself. I used to start speaking about God, and folks would leave my table. They'd go sit over somebody else's table. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of the temptations. Turn the TV off. Turn the internet off and reserve the unjust to the day of judgment to be punished. There are certain people that are going to be punished. So ain't no use you getting mad and get upset. God's got them. Don't worry about it. Vengeance is his. He's going to repay them. He said, but while you're in this situation and I've got you in the world, I know how to deliver you out of you. Listen to the Holy Spirit. When they curse, say praise the Lord. When they curse, say hallelujah. And that'll, that'll, that'll offset them. Amen. When they're standing in the line and, and, and in the checkout line and they're cursing and you standing there and you just turn around and say, well, praise the Lord, hallelujah. they bold enough to curse, you ought to be bold enough to say hallelujah and praise the Lord. That'll shut them up real quick. And even, you know what? Even people that have demons will start saying praise the Lord. Yeah. You ever notice that? Yeah. They're full of devils and they, oh, I praise the Lord, Hallelujah. That's a religious devil. And you say, religious devil come out of them. Because you can discern that spirit, that even in basic deliverance. Do you know, if you go, if you deal with people that come out of jail, they know more word than you do. Yes. I call it jailhouse religion. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And, it, and, it, and they keep going back in. They get out, 
and they get some kind of form of deliverance, and then they go and sin again, and more demons come in, and they go back to jail. Because they don't want to come for deliverance. Well, I'm Catholic, so I'm going to go back to the Catholic Church. Well, the Catholic Church ain't going to do no exorcism on you. Amen? You are anointed to deliver. Luke chapter 4, verse 18, I said that earlier, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, you, to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent you to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent you to preach deliverance. Deliverance has to be preached. There's not all these uh, uh, sermonettes and Sesame Street scripture uh, sermons. You need to preach deliverance purposely, put pressure on demons that are in people to make them manifest. Not just preach a message and you, you're putting pressure on those devils and talking about how people got devil. And then at the end of the service, say, Abracadabra, and y'all go home. I didn't pray for you. No, you got to cast the devil out of them. You got to lay hands on them and you got to uh, uh, recover. He said, the recovering of the sight of the blind. The blind are not just necessarily physical blind, but spiritually blind. The living, the, them that are said of living, them are bruised. They're bruised people that are, got millions of dollars and they're bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So this is the acceptable year of the Lord. Acts 10, 38, how Jesus of Nazareth was anointed with Holy Ghost and power. You got to be anointed. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? And Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with them. Now, if casting out devils, Jesus described as doing good, then why are other churches attacking deliverance ministries and deliverance churches? I'm doing a good thing. But you're saying, I'm not doing good. People are being oppressed of the devil. But you don't have discernment in your church to know that they're oppressed of the devil. The people are sitting in congregations that have suicide in them. The people are uh, they're bound by pornography. They're bound by stuff, and they don't know how to get free because the pastor don't know it, and he speaks against it. Whatever you speak against, and if you, whatever you preach in your church, that's what's going to manifest. If you preach deliverance, it will manifest in your church. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. So God has anointed many to deliver. Anointed many to, to get free and to cast out devils. Deuteronomy 28, see and I got a few minutes and then I'm going to wrap this up. 28, 60 says, so your life shall hang in doubt before thee. Thou shalt fear day and night and have no assurance of thy life. So what has been released in this last year? Fear. And you're seeing people manifest this fear on these airplanes. That's they're, they're getting on airplanes that manifest it. Everybody's mad, angry, and, and their, their life is in, hanging in doubt. They want to fight you because uh, you didn't get the shot. I'm going to die if you don't, you know, just crazy stuff. Their life is not injured because they don't have Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's why your life is hanging in the balance. In the morning, verse 67, you shall say, I sure glad it would be evening. I hate, I, sorry, I got out of bed. I sure be glad when this day is over with so I can go get back into bed. He said, he said in the evening, you shall say, I sure be glad when morning comes because I'm tired of these demons keeping me up all night. When is the morning going to come? For the fear of your heart within you, you shall fear. So fear is in the heart. And for the sight of thy eyes, thou shalt see. Fear, what you shall see. What you see is you go into your cupboard and you go in your refrigerator, there ain't no food in there. There's a fear. Oh, how am I going to eat? Or how are my children going to eat? And your, your life is hanging in the balance. You're under a curse. We need to get you out from under that curse. Verse 68 says, The Lord shall bring you unto Egypt again with ships by the way he spake thereof. God said, I'm going to make you make sure they're going to put you back on link card and, and get you <laughs> section 8. I'm going to give you a, a, a stimulus check. Amen. You're going to go back to Egypt and get your stimulus check. Amen. Your life's going to hang in balance. I hope they sure hope they send another stimulus check next month so I can make it. Your life is hanging in balance. God said, you shall see it no more, and you shall be sold to your enemies for bondmen. What's happening in America? The Democrats are selling us to our enemies. They're selling us to China. 
They're selling us to Iran. They're selling our, they're selling our secrets. They're selling our, 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 our commerce, our produce, everything. They're selling our jobs. They're selling everything being sold out to, to the, and, and we become bondmen. They close the pipelines down. They're doing all of this crazy stuff. They're closing the car factories down. They're closing businesses down. They're selling you out to Egypt because, God, you don't want to serve God. God said you'll serve your enemies. Last scripture. These are the words of the covenant. Deuteronomy 29, verse 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make to the children of Israel in the land of Moab beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. God made two different covenants with them. The first Ten Commandments, Moses broke. They couldn't even keep Ten Commandments. He said, I'm giving you Ten Commandments to show you that you can't keep them without me. Then he came down and Moses went back up there. Moses put 40 days up there. God had him write it all back down, gave him the ceremonial law, and he gave him the moral law. Gave him two laws, ceremony and civil law, the civil law and the moral laws. That's why we have moral laws and civil laws. He gave them, this is what you do. If someone's sheep or someone's cattle get into your field, they have to recompense you uh, in your field, whatever, whatever happened. He gave them the law. Uh, if someone's fighting over this and that, you, you, you judge the matter, and this is the law. But here's a ceremony law. This is, you shall bring your first fruits. You shall bring your tithes. You shall, you shall honor the Lord with your first fruits. You shall not lie with another man's wife. And these are, these are moral laws. He gave them both of them. So we have to have both of them to function in a society. So that was the covenant that God made. So deliverance, you need to come into the covenant. First thing you need to do is repent of your sins. Receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. Repent means turn around. Acknowledge your sins. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I repent of all my sins. Holy Spirit, come into my heart and live your life through me. By faith, I receive you as Lord and Savior. By faith, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Give me power. Let me speak in tongues. By faith, I'm going to serve you. The Holy Spirit is going to help me. He will be my helper. He will show me all things, and I'll grow. Now, Lord, I believe by faith you're going to get these demons out of me. I loose the angels of the Lord to come and help me. Cast these spirits out of my soul. Cast them out of my flesh. Cast them out of my physical body. So I'm free. So, Father, I pray right now for those that are watching. If you got fear, we bind the spirit of fear in your life. We bind the spirit of, 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 of cancer, of torment, of vexation, of hexing spirits, aggravating spirits that aggravate you, spirits that have been just possessed. I command every demon that is in your life to be bound with the chains uh, of fetters of, of God dipped in the blood of Jesus. We bind those spirits until you can come to a deliverance church uh, and get you free. We bind pornography. We bind lust, perversion, and pride. All these things that keep you bound. We bind poverty and lack uh, of the curses that are in your life. Uh, according to Galatians 3.13, that Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. So you need to begin to uh, <clears throat> break these curses off your bloodline, everybody in your family got a divorce, break the curse of divorce. Everybody in your family got cancer, break the curse of cancer. Everybody in your family get diabetes, break the curse of diabetes. Everybody in your family uh, go through all, uh, early death, break the curse of early death. None of the men in the, in the family go to church, break the curse of the bastard. All these are different curses. You break them by faith, speak it out. It's broken. The Holy Spirit will honor that. He will send angels to help you get set free. So deliverance is the children's bread. It belongs to the believer, not to the unbeliever. If you get free, don't go back out and sin. Jesus said, go and sin no more. At least a worse thing come upon you. So I speak to this generation. I speak to this, the, those that are watching that deliverance is coming to America. Deliverance is coming around the world. Deliverance is here. It's here. It started 35, 30, 40 years ago. I've been in this for 30-something years now, and I've been delivering since then, and God has instilled it in the earth realm, and it's going to get stronger and stronger. This next move of God is going to be a divine move of God where man or deliverance minister, or even myself, will not need to lay hands on you. God's going to cast the devil out of you. He's going to lay his hands on you, and you're going to get free. Who the son's free is free indeed. The Bible says if the Spirit of God is in you, you are not going to sin. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. I'm done. God bless you.
If you'd like to give those on Facebook Live,